Hello, Gary Simon here of Corsetro.com. And now that we know the very basics of how to install Angular, let's go ahead and look more specifically about how it all works. So in this video, we're gonna cover the very basics of components. And so first we're gonna start looking at what a component is, and then we're going to start our own Angular project with the Angular client. And then we're gonna look at what a component looks like in actual coding. And then we're going to create our own component manually and then use the Angular client to create one automatically. Components are the fundamental building blocks that define both the logic and the views, also known as templates, of an Angular project. Now, more specifically, a component consists of a view, which is defined by HTML, and a class, which includes the logic defined by properties and class methods. Now, if you feel confused on exactly what that means, don't worry. You'll figure it out shortly as we progress throughout the series. Now, to give you a visual perspective of how the views of components might be laid out, let's take a look at a standard layout. Now, the following applies to a website as seen here or an app. Now, structurally, this page has three primary sections. It has a header, a main content area, and a sidebar to the right. So we have the header up here, which would be a component. The main content area over here, which would be another component. And then finally, a sidebar over here, which would be yet another component. Now, also note that components are nestable. So let's go ahead and switch over to our code editor to see what a component looks like in actual coding. Okay, so here in Git Bash or whichever command line tool you wanna to use in your projects folder, if you wanna create a brand new Angular 2 project, simply type in ng new and a project title. Hit enter and let it run, it will take a little bit of time. Now, because I already did this from the previous lesson in this series, I'm just gonna use CD into that Angular 2 project. So I'm gonna type in CD angular-fastest, which is the name I gave it, and then type in ng serve. So this will take just a few seconds to compile everything and get it running. Make sure everything works here and no errors are spit out, okay? And then we'll check our browser real quickly for localhost 4200, all right. Now let's go over here to the code editor. I have angular-fastest opened up here. We're gonna to go to source, app, and then app component.ts. So this is what a basic component looks like, and it's split up into three different sections. So up here we have the import, we have what's called a component decorator, and then the exported class. So import up here, by the way, we can import multiple members and have multiple imports. Import simply means we're importing a member, which could be, by the way, a function, a value, or a class of some sort from other modules. And by the way, a module is simply a file in Angular that either imports or exports one of those members from either the Angular library, a third-party library, or your own modules. Now, if that was confusing. Don't worry. We're going to keep going over this stuff so eventually you'll commit it to memory and you'll internally understand it. All right, so after that, we have the component decorator. All right, so what is that? Basically, we have inside here what's called metadata. And these are just a series of properties and values that let Angular 2 know information about our component. Now, we absolutely must have a selector and a template to define our view. That's all that's required, not necessarily even this styles URL over here. And basically the selector allows us to communicate a custom HTML tag, and that allows us to communicate what is inside the view or the template itself over here. So if we look at index.html down here inside of the root, we'll see we have this app-root tag. Now, of course, this isn't something that's rooted in HTML as a regular tag. It's something that we've made up and specified here in the app-or.component.ts app root. All right, and then down here, finally, we have export class app component. 
and you don't necessarily have to have anything inside of here. However, if your application does require some type of logic, you would specify it in here inside app component. And then finally over in app.module.ts, whenever you have a component that your application uses, you must first import it right here. And then you also must specify it as the exported name that you gave it in the declarations. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our own component manually. And then after that, we'll go ahead and create one through the Angular client. So let's go ahead and we're gonna click on our app folder right here and create a new folder. And we'll just call this header. Inside of header, we're gonna create two new files. So we'll create one called header.component.ts and then another header.component.html. Okay, so let's create our component. Now, if you remember by default, we must import component at the very top. So import component from angular-core. All right, now we have to give it the component decorator. Component, and then we have to give it a selector and we'll put that as app-header. Really, you can name it whatever you want. And then also down here, if you recall in their app component, we have template URL, which could either be again inline. If it's inline, we simply get rid of URL and then specify the HTML here. Or if we want a separate file, which is our case, we specify template URL here. So let's go back and we'll paste that in and simply change this here to header.component.html. Oops. Okay. After that, we have to export class and header component. We'll go ahead and save this. And now the second step is we have to come back to app.module.ts and import it. So we'll just copy this line, header component from forward slash header, header.component. And then finally, make sure that comma is there after app component and put in header component. Okay, so now if we were to go to the browser and refresh this, nothing's gonna happen for two reasons. First, we have to specify something inside the header.component.html. For now, let's just put instead of HTML, just type in header. And then secondly, we have to come to the app.component.html and we have to add in that selector. So we'll go ahead and specify app dash header and add the closing tag. And remember, we use app-header because we define that as the selector right here. All right, make sure anything else that needs saved is saved. And then we go back to our browser and we see header has now shown up. So now this is consisting of two different components, header and the default app component right there. So now let's go ahead and create one automatically through the Angular client and you'll see how this saves us quite a bit of time. So let's go ahead and open up this. I'm gonna hit Control C just to get out of the ng serve mode. And I'm gonna type in ng new component and we're gonna specify our component name. Let's say footer. Oops, I'm not actually, let's see here. You cannot use a new command inside an Angular client project. Oops, sorry about that. NG generate component footer. There we go. New is not correct. All right, so you can see it created uh, some files here, but it also did a little bit more than just create files. So let's go ahead back here. You can see we now have a new footer folder. We have a CSS file, HTML, and by default, it adds some HTML in here, footer.component.ts. By the way, it added some things that we didn't see initially. It added on init 
which is a life cycle hook. And by the way, we'll describe what that is exactly in a later video. And it also export class footer component implements the on init. It added a constructor for dependency injection, which we'll also cover in a later video. And then we have our ng on init uh, method here, which by the way, we'll cover again later on. You don't really need to worry about that now. Also down in app.component.ts or app.module.ts, it imported this for us as well here in the imports. And also it added it to the declarations. So now all we have to do is we'll come back to app.component.html and we'll add in app-footer and save it. And by the way, let's make sure that is the actual name of the selector by going to the footer.component.ts. It is right here, app-footer. And there we go. Now, if we go back to our browser, we'll see that it did not work. <laughs> but uh, oh, that's why, yeah. Wonder why that is. Let's go back here, type in ng serve. And by the way, if you're really developing in real time, you would have two different command lines open uh, so that one is consistently running ng serve and then the other one you can run commands from. So that's why that happened. So let's go back to our localhost 4200 and footer works. There we go. All right, so hopefully now you have a solid understanding about the very basics of components and how they work. So now, instead of delving more specifically into the structure of Angular 2, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can import custom CSS, or not custom, but CSS frameworks and also work with templating in Angular 2. I'll see you then.